Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, I wanted to come on here with my Summer Slam preview. I'm going to redo this again. Uh, for today, today, tonight, Summer Slam in Detroit. The first one uh, in 30 years in Detroit, believe it or not. Um, and yeah, it's the 36th one overall. And just like last year, it has eight matches. Uh, there were some matches originally scheduled for SummerSlam. And uh, unfortunately, those matches ended up getting um, switched around, basically. Um, I thought last night we were supposed to get Santos Escobar and Austin Theory for the U.S. title. Instead, that's going to be, I think, next week on SmackDown. I think that's what it's going to be. Uh, because originally, I think it was supposed to be on SummerSlam the match, but instead, it's going to be on it's going to be on the SmackDown after SummerSlam, and then of course um, Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch they were supposed to uh, be at SummerSlam. Uh, that got moved to about basically a week from this Monday, you know, in Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada for that Raw edition. And um, basically, the reason for that is, from what has been cited uh, by Fightful and PW Insider and other sources, to be personal reasons. We don't know what the personal reason is, but that's why the matches were uh, moved. If you will, at least that match was moved. The uh, like I said, the U.S. title match was moved from um, basically was moved from. SummerSlam to uh, SmackDown, I'm assuming this upcoming week, or maybe even at Payback, we'll see, but probably this be the SmackDown after SummerSlam. Um, what we do have instead is um, eight matches. The more recent match that got added was the SummerSlam Battle Royal. Slim Jim SummerSlam Battle Royal. And um, this is not the first time Slim Jim has you know, sponsored a an event for WWE. They've done it in the past in the early to early to mid nineties. And then of course they did it with WCW and sometimes even in WCW they had uh themed matches uh for the sponsor. You know, when it came to you know, when it came to Slim Jim, that is as their sponsor. They had themed matches. Kind of a cross promotion, if you will. So basically because basically that's what any sponsor too. Snickers uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Mountain Dew, Pitch Black, you name it. Uh, there's always a cross promotion with them to not only help as a as a bit of a thank you to for sponsoring them, and also to kind of advertise the sponsor as well, if you will. Um, anyway, the matches they do have lined up are eight of them, and we're going to start off with the Slim Jim uh, SummerSlam Battle Royal. And the participants right now are L.A. Knight, Sheamus, Tommaso Ciampa, Shinsuke Nakamura, Otis, Chad Gable, Karrion Cross, Grayson Waller, Matt, Whittle, Matt Riddle, Santos Escobar, AJ Styles, and The Miz. Now there are going to be other names added probably throughout the day tomorrow. So you can expect Bronson Reed in there. You can expect Johnny Gagano in there. You can expect Omos in there. Because, you know, if Vince is still, you know, working even at home when he should be, you know, basically not doing so because apparently he is uh, on medical leave, which means he shouldn't be doing anything, um, you know, of uh, work-related at all. But if he is still kind of slipping in a few notes, emailing them, texting them, faxing them, to Bruce Pritchard and Triple H and all of them to, to make this happen, then don't be surprised that Giant Olmos is in there. So I'm expecting him to be in there. Like I said, Bronson Reed, Johnny Gagano. Uh, I'm expecting the Street Profits, the newly formed, the newly improved Hurt Business Street Profits. I'm expecting Bobby Lashley uh, to be in there. You know, so you're going to get some other names. You might even get some NXT names in there. I expect... Uh, if anything, you might get the schism in there. Maybe Joe Gacy in there as an NXT name. Maybe Kamalo Hayes. Maybe this might be the way they bring in Braun Breaker. You know, that'd be something. So, so yeah, you're going to get more names than what is being advertised. But 
you know, the question is, who does WWE go with? And right now, it does seem like, according to various reports, that they're going to go with LA Knight. LA Knight is going to be the one to win this. Now, here's the thing. Some people feel that, yeah, LA Knight is the predictable one because this matchup's basically being set up for him. But I think history has shown that when he's been, spot, when he's been part of a cross-promotional sponsored match, he doesn't succeed. Go back to the beginning of the year with the Royal Rumble. But if he, but if this is a way to kind of, you know, as people like JD from NY206 are putting it, shut the fans up, then yeah, I think they will go with LA Knight just to say, hey, look, see, we are pushing him. So I'm going to say, I, I, I will go with the majority and say LA Knight, but if not LA Knight, I could see them maybe giving it to a Braun Breaker if he's in, if he's part of this to kind of really like push his stock up and say, hey, we're behind this guy now too. So I'm going to go with LA Knight. It's either LA Knight, Waller, or Breaker if Breaker's in the match to win the SummerSlam Battle Royal. And it is in Detroit, so that would make sense for Braun Breaker to be part of this. You know, because of course, his father from Detroit, he, I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious there. So... Again, those will be my three picks. LA Knight, number one. Braun Breaker, number two. And then uh, Grayson Waller um, as well. Uh, next up, we have Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. MMA rules. Basically, this is essentially a UFC match uh, within the confines of a WWE ring. Some people feel that they should have used the, the Lions Den match or something uh, you know, of a facsimile. Uh, and I do agree that. I do agree with that. Uh, this match is going to be interesting because, you know, if it's contested under MMA rules, you know, that does mean at least they'll let them get a little, you know, they will let them get legitimate with each other. Like, they will let them just, you know, really go at it. You know, no holding back. But the question is, who's going to win? And since this is an MMA, an MMA match that is going to have a predetermined outcome and everything... I'm going to go, you see, this is what's interesting because rumors are Ronda might be leaving WWE right after this and going back to UFC and all that, you know, or doing something. And that would basically mean she's going to put Shayna over on the way out. But I would not be surprised if Ronda is put over in this match. Like on her way out, she come, she goes out the way she came, she came in going over. So... I think, so I'm going to say, you know, even though the logical choice is Shayna Baszler, I'm going to say Ronda Rousey because knowing WWE you might want to bring her back, you know, once again and down the line, I'm thinking they're going to let her go out the way she came in, you know, a winner. I, I just got that feeling. Next up, we have Gunther and Drew McIntyre for the Intercontinental title. Uh, this is going to be interesting. It, this is going to be an interesting match. You know, because of the fact that these two, you know, as we saw at WrestleMania and the Triple Threat with Sheamus, they will go at it. These two will let loose. They will beat the living crap out of each other. They will do that. The question is, though, does WWE uh, pull the trigger and put the belt on Drew to try? Because here's the one thing about WWE, and I think a lot of people will agree with this. The one way they entice talent to resign you know, a, a contract or resign with them for another few years is by promising them a championship. You know, the first, a championship that could be the first step to the championship. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at this match and I'm thinking if they go with Drew, that's the way of enticing him to resign and stay with the company with the promise that this will be the first of many championships and that even if he drops this one, you know, his next championship will be the world title. So, uh, so I'm thinking that if they, so I'm thinking if they, you know, go with Drew going over Gunther, that means they have too much respect for Wayne Ferris, uh, the honky tonk man, and the record he sent as champion, uh, just you know to uh, decimate it with Gunther's reign. So, you know, again, I look at Drew, I look at the fact that if Drew's the one that wins, then you know honky tonk man's record stays intact because again they have too much respect for it, they have too much respect to say hey. You know, we're not to, to say, hey, we're not going to let somebody, you know, uh, come in and break that record anytime soon. I mean, true, they let the New Day break Demolition's record as tag team champions. 
But, you know, will they let, you know, Gunther break Honky Tonks? And I think that's where it kind of differs because they've had multiple opportunities to do that, but they never, they've never pulled the trigger. So I think this time around, you know, this time around might be different, but we'll see. So to me, if they go with Drew McIntyre here, that means they're going to keep the record intact. You know, Gunther is not going to be champion. They're going to keep the record intact. Gunther goes over, then the, the then the record's pretty much in jeopardy. There's no doubt about that. Uh, again, and also again, if Drew goes over, it isn't just because they want to uh, maintain the honky tonk man's record and everything out of respect for him, but it's also because they're enticing Drew to resign with the company, stay with the company, and tell him this is the first of many championships you'll be winning here as part of the raw brand and all that. So, so we'll we'll see where they go with this. You know, this kind of is a bit of a toss up, and everything. But I'm gonna play it a little safe, and I'm gonna say Gunther. You know, I'm gonna say Gunther, Gunther if you will, uh, to win. I mean, if he does win against Drew, this would might be the first time he wins with with us. I mean, he has won with some assistance at times, but it's mainly primarily all he's been clean. So I think Gunther winning here might be the only time he gets a help you know, from Imperium if they are at ringside. So I'm going to go with Gunther to retain because I think, you know, if Triple H has anything, any say in it, he's going to want to see that record broken, especially by one of his guys. Now, next up, we have Ricochet and Logan Paul. This is going to be a spectacle. There's no doubt about that. Um, to me, you know, picking a winner here, you know, you would think it's obvious go with Logan Paul and everything because he's a bigger name. And that is true. But this is the biggest high profile um, program uh, that Ricochet has been in in WWE since he's been there. Let's be honest. The biggest one so far. Uh, it's a singles match on a big four pay-per-view, you know, and it's got story behind it. The built has been great. And you don't do that for... Any, and you don't just do that for anybody if, unless you feel that person is now ready to have a rocket ship strapped to him and launched straight to the top or close to it. So this match will be interesting. Uh, there is rumors that this is going to probably kick the show off. And the reason it would kick the show off is because Logan Paul has been petitioning to be the first match in. Uh, or the, yeah, the first match in um, at SummerSlam. Basically the first match to kick everything off. So that way he can, you know, afterwards... You know, you know, leave the uh, leave the stadium, get on a plane, and try to get to I think it was it Dallas, I believe, for his uh, brother's boxing match. You know, Jake Paul's match with Nate D Nate Diaz. So, whatever the outcome's going to be, um, it will be. It, you know, whatever the outcome's going to be at the end, you know, he's going. If this is the first match, then he's going to have to book it real quickly to get on a air, on an airplane, a personal airplane to Dallas. You know, to see his brother, uh, to support his brother in his match. Um, so again, uh, so again, it's going to be interesting what direction they go in booking wise. Because if this goes on first, you know, who do they go with? Who do they who do they go with? Is is the question. So for me, you would think, you would think logically. You know, you would think logically, logically they were going to go. You know, or you think logically. You know, you know, you would think logically that they would go with Logan Paul because he's the big name. I was just checking something on my security camera. My mom is on the phone with my second older sister, so it gives me time to do this. This is actually the second attempt at doing this because <laughs> that's just that I was starting the original or the first one. That's when she called. Um, anyway, anyway, like I said, um, you would think. Um, logically, Logan Paul is the bigger name. They'll go with him because he hasn't really won a singles match since last SummerSlam uh, against The Miz. But if this is Ricochet's time and they're finally going to strip, you know, strap the, the rocket to him, or at least a sm you know a medium-sized rocket to him, straight to the upper mid card, if not lower main event card, um, I would go with Ricochet, and especially with the fact that you're you're bringing in his real life fiance Samantha Irvin into this. Uh, as well, usually historically, that means you're going to be booking that person to, you know, come off as a bigger deal. 
and everything. And I think honestly, I think honestly, you know, if that's the case, they got to go ricochet. So for me, the logical choice, of course, would be Logan Paul. But I'm going to go with Ricochet. Just, this is a long shot for me. I'm going to go with Ricochet. Next match is the Triple Threat Women's Championship match between Asuka. That's A-S-U-K-A. -A, we know for YouTube to spell. Um, Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. This is interesting because this is pretty much like a dream. Uh, you know, we always talk about dream matches. But this is like a dream Triple Threat match. You know, one a, a triple threat dream match, we'll put it that way. Because these are towns people have been wanting to see in the ring all at the same time at once. I mean, we've gotten Asuka and Charlotte before. We've gotten Bianca and, you know, Asuka before. But we've never had all three of them in the ring. And this is going to be interesting to see who walks out with the championship. Of course, there's that wild card of EO. You know, EO Sky. So that's going to be um, uh, something to look out for. Uh, for me, who would win? Well, if they want to give people, you know, what they want, especially right now, Triple H has got a little bit more leeway uh, creatively, once again, you know, according to a lot of people, uh, than, you know, than he's had uh, lately, then I would say he's got to go with Asuka and then maybe book the match between Asuka and Io and give us that Japanese strong style women's championship match. That would make the most logical sense because that's what fans want. Um, and, and I agree. I would like that, too. But right now, this is WWE, and to me, I hate to say this, but I am going to go with the most, in my opinion, the most logical choice. I'm going to go with, woo, the Queen Charlotte Flair to win. But what I see happening is I see her getting attacked by Asuka and Bianca, if not one of them, if not both of them, afterwards. And that opens the door for Io to cash in, or come down to the aisle, cash in, and walk out women's champion. So I look at Charlotte becoming a 15-time world champion, but I don't think that reign's going to last but a few moments, because she might get beat down by both ladies afterwards, both opponents afterwards. And then that's going to open the door for Io. So I see two new champions coming out of this. Charlotte first, winning the triple threat, and then because of cash in, Io. That's what I, that's how I see it probably going down. Next up, we have Cody Rhodes, Brock Lesnar in a singles match. Um, this this match, you know, people were wondering. Again, I'm watching my security camera just in case because my mom could walk down that hall in a minute with talking to my sister and everything. So, you just, you're just saying. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, like I said, next up we have Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. In a regular singles match, people thought this was going to have a stipulation. It still might get a stipulation. It still might. Cody might get on that mic and say, hey, if we're going to do this, let's throw the rule book out the window and get this done with. Or get this over with. Let's just, you know, tear into each other. He might do that. And we might get a anything goes match out of this. You know, right off the bat. Who knows? Um, but uh, honestly, this is the third match in the trilogy. The build-up has been good, according to a lot of folks. The matches have been good. It's just that we... Haven't got a definitive answer as to why this is happening. I mean, even both, Bro even Cody is acknowledging, like, we don't, I don't even know what this is all about. I don't know what this is all about. So I'm thinking what's going to happen. I'm thinking what's going to happen is we're going to get something, we're, we're going to get something of an answer uh, after this match. I mean, I do predict Cody to win. I, I predict a mistake by Brock that's going to open the door for Cody to hit several crossroads. And win the match. And then I expect Brock. Not to attack him. But to go up to him. Shake his hand. Pull him in close. And whisper what he, the answer he's been wanting. Like basically why, he's, why he attacked him. And do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. If that ties into the main event later on. You know for the, the tribal combat match. Do not be surprised. But I am going to go with Brock, I mean, not Brock, but Cody to win. I'm going to go with Cody to win. And I think, again, what's going to happen, maybe, is Brock's going to pull him in, shake his hand, pull him in, whisper his, whisper the answer as to why he's been attacking him, and that's going to tie in to the uh, undisputed Universal title match later. So I'm going to go with Cody to win this. Next up, we have Seth Rollins and Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight Championship. I think this match is going to be better than the Money in the Bank one. 
I really do. Um, everybody is everybody's pretty much going to go with Finn here because, you know, Seth has said he's working with an injured back. He's been working with it since last year at Hell in the Cell. So, you know, everybody's predicting that because he's revealed that, they're going to probably put Finn over, maybe clean, you know, to win, to become champion. Maybe do a spot that, you know, makes it look like he's injured, legitimately Seth's back, and that's going to put him out for a while so he can go and get the back operation. So we'll see if they do that. But everybody's going with Finn. I'm going, you know what, I'm going to go with Finn too. I'm going to go with Finn too. I mean, I know that might be a long shot to go with. But this is seven years in the making. Seven years since the last time they met for a championship at SummerSlam. When that was to crown the first Universal title. Or Universal Champion. So I'm going to go with Finn here. I'm going to go with Finn here. And I do not expect a cash in. Because even though they are teasing dissension in Judgment Day. They're teasing it. But because Judgment Day is such a hot act. Especially with Dominic in the fold. I don't think they're going to pull the trigger just yet. I don't think so. But I think Judgment Day will play a role in this upcoming match. So I'm going to go with Finn Balor to win the world title. Then in the main event, Tribal Combat for the Undisputed Universal Championship and the title of Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, Jey Uso. Now everybody is saying Roman Reigns is going to retain. It's obvious every time he's had these kind of matches, he wins. You know, so you have to go Roman, right? That that would be the logical choice. And yes, if there wasn't some wild cards in play, I would go with Roman. Now, straight up, if there's nothing happens, I will say Roman Reigns wins. Because the stipulation is that if Jay doesn't win, you know, he's possibly out of the, the, the Samoan family, the Samoan dynasty. Or is he? You see, if there's no... Let's put it, there's no cash in it's just a straight up anything goes tribal combat match and Roman wins and Roman's about to exile you know Jay from the Samoan dynasty I could see Jimmy coming back to try to beg him not to do it say hey we'll fall in line we'll do what you say and even if that doesn't work I could see the rock showing up and the rock basically revealing to Roman yeah you're only trouble chief temporarily when I'm not around but when I'm around I'm the true tribal chief. I'm the one that leads this family. And Jay ain't going nowhere. So I could see that. I could see either Jimmy coming in to try to convince Roman, don't kick him out. We'll do what you say. We'll fall in line. Roman won't listen. And then that's when The Rock shows up. And The Rock basically reveals, hey, I'm the true tribal chief. Not you. You're only tribal chief in my absence. But I'm back. And guess what? My decision is Jay stays. And that's final. And you can use that. To tease to a potential Rock Roman uh, matchup down the line, especially depending on how long this actor strike goes on, so um, so that could be something they do if it's straight up. If it's a straight up, you know, Roman winning. But I was listening, and a shout out here to We Are Pro Wrestling and J- and Just Alex. I was listening to their uh, preview show yesterday, and you know they. And uh, it was during this uh, discussion of the main event, who was going to walk out as champion, that We Are Pro Wrestling brought up a scenario that even Alex was like, oh, that's right, that could happen too. And what that scenario is, is he said we could get a moment where there's a double down or a situation that causes some kind of like mo- opening to occur where all of a sudden you hear Judgment Day's music hit and out comes Damian Priest, and he ends up cashing in on Roman, inserting himself into the match, and becoming Universal Champion. And what this does is it safeguards Jey Uso from being exiled out of Samoan Dynasty, and it protects Roman from being pinned by Jay and losing his status as Tribal Chief. And also what it does is because we all pro wrestling brought this up, how can a faction, a super faction, that's being pushed, that's being looked at in a positive direction by everybody in WWE, like Judgment Day is, how can they say that they run WWE if they don't have all the major titles? And it's, and it's like I said, SummerSlam. I think I said this. I think I either said it for SummerSlam. Yeah, I think I did say it for SummerSlam. I said 
in a video, SummerSlam could be their night. It could be their night a la Evolution, 20, Evolution 2004. I think, no, not 2004, 2003, yeah. A la Evolution 2003. And why do you ask? Because at the end of the last pay-per-view in 2003, Armageddon, Evolution had all the titles. Randy Orton was in a Continental Champion, Ric Flair and Batista had the tag titles, and Triple H had just won back the world title. So we could get a two, tw we can get twenty almost twenty years later a repeat of that with Judgment Day, but this time with Rhea as the Women's World t Champion, Dominic as NXT North American Champion, Finn as the new World Champion, and Damian as the new Undisputed Universal Champion, thus solidifying their claim of running all of WWE because you would have representation for Judgment Day on all three brands. And just like the NXT North American title allows Dominic to bring Judgment Day with him to NXT, Damien being Universal Champion would allow him to bring Judgment Day to SmackDown. And storyline-wise, you could resume the feud between Dominic and his dad. You could resume that feud. You could resume the feud with Judgment Day and the LWO. And now you possibly insert a reunited bloodline a reunited bloodline because of what happened at SummerSlam into the mix and maybe even a new formed Hurt Business with the Street Profits, Lashley and maybe Bianca and you're off to the races with any potential War Games match you can think of for Survivor Series. So again, if it's straight up no bullshit excuse my language God uh, I'm going to go with Roman, but I see The Rock showing up to save Jay and keep him in the family. And reveal that he's the real tribal chief and Roman's only tribal chief in his absence. And that's it. Or, you know, so I'm going to go with Roman if it's straight up. But Rock to save Jay and reveal he's the real tribal chief. But if they play it the way we are pro wrestling stating, and they could because of the backing Judgment Day as hard as they are, I could see it happening. Then I'm going to go with Damian Priest walking out with that title. And it protects Jay. It protects Roman. It probably brings the bloodline back together because now they would have a common enemy. And thus you also solidify Judgment Day as um, the top group in all of WWE across all the brands. And again, you do numerous of things. You, you know, by Damian being Universal Champ, he brings Judgment Day with him to SmackDown. You reignite the feud with Ray and LW with Ray, with uh, Dominic and his dad, as well as the LW and by extension LW and Judgment Day. You add in the a reunited bloodline. You add in the newly formed Hurt business, which would probably include Bianca. And again, you're off to the races. You really are. But anyway, that's pretty much my predictions for, um, you know, for this uh, for SummerSlam. Oh, and by the way, what I mentioned earlier. If when Cody beats Brock and I see Brock shaking his hand, pulling him in and whispering something to his ear, what I think he's going to whisper to Cody is at the end of the Roman Reigns J Uso match, you know, and everything, you know, at the end of that, I could see The Rock coming out and maybe saying that Cody let him in on a little something because he wanted to do this because what he, because he's actually family. So he wants to go out and confront, you know, uh, Roman. I could see Rock being Rock coming out and saying, "Yeah, Cody told me that little told me something that Brock told him earlier, or mentioned to me what Brock whispered to him earlier." And Rock, via Cody, could reveal that the reason Brock was attacking Cody was because was because of Paul Heyman. That's right. I could see it being revealed either by the Rock, maybe even Cody comes down um, to reveal it. We don't know, or it gets revealed later on, depending on the situation. Because I still see Jay being part of the family because The Rock's going to save him no matter what. But I do see the revelation being revealed that, you know, Paul Heyman paid off Brock Lesnar or made a deal with Brock Lesnar that if he took out Cody Rhodes, that he would lift the ban on Brock Lesnar challenging for the Undisputed Universal title. I could see that. So even if it goes the way of Roman 
winning straight up against Jay, and then Rock coming out, saving Jay, keeping him in the family, revealing he's the true tribal chief, then I could see on on the Raw afterwards, Cody coming out and revealing what Brock told him, and then we see the ramifications of that later on on SmackDown with Roman, if he show, if he's there, calling in Paul Heyman or calling Paul Heyman to the ring or having both in the ring, and Roman finally just confronting Heyman about what Cody revealed, or what Cody revealed to the world, other than everything between, you know, the business deal, the deal between him and Brock. So I could see that happening too. So a lot of things could come out of that main event. You know, a cash-in, straight-up win, Rock coming out at the end, revealing he's the real Tribal Chief, saving Jay. And then, of course, post-Raw, after SummerSlam, I could see Cody revealing what Brock said, and then the ramifications being felt on SmackDown. But those are just my... Um, those are just my uh, pre. That's just my preview uh, for SummerSlam uh, tonight. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment down below, guys. Love to hear from each and every one of you on that. You will get an audio version of this at BW Roses Discussions on Spotify and all your other and all your all your other favorite audio podcast locations. But more specifically, follow me on Spotify. I have reached a hundred followers. Let's keep that up. That opens up the ambassador's ads for me. That would help me out financially. But guys, let me know what your thoughts are, and until next time, I will talk to y'all later. God bless. Take care.